Okay, and so I, you know, it, I'm inviting everyone to join, join me. I join the worship team. They are super excited to be doing this along with me. Uh, it's going to be 5.30 p.m. because of the time difference with the churches in, in London, but it's going to be here, and we're going to stream it live as well. Thank you. This, this is September the 15th, and uh, that's a Wednesday, and it's going to be 5 o'clock here, and it's inviting you here to come help celebrate the goodness of God on our life for keeping her this many years, and she wants to give the day to God in the worship service. So will you respond to that and just come? Praise the Lord. The Lord has been doing. Uh, the Lord is doing something wonderful. I know it. And uh, I look through the archive of things posted on Discovery for Men's Forum, and I saw this article I wrote and posted on the 11th of March, 2015. That was when I posted it. And that was the Sunday before that 15 was when I preached this same message, 2015. So I looked through it and I saw that it reached 34,000 audience. And you can go on Discovery for Men and look for this, uh, this the one titled Knowledge of the Original. And you will see that 37 audience and about 300 and something shared it. And, uh, so many, many and when things happen like that, sometimes I, I, I'm taken aback and I look like, whoa, who is this one that, that, that something of thousands saw? But then I was made to remember that through, the, through what is going on here and the messages coming out from this pulpit, with the Pakistan Network and the, the King's Television, the message from here now reaches 2 million audience. So when I'm ministering, very scanty people come, and our 2 million are waiting. Doesn't matter to hear, but it's making sense. Part of the report was that 300 and something received, they, they gave their life to Christ. And then the latest report that we received was that seven people going through cancer were healed. Listening. But the prophet is but without honor. It's here we beg them to come and they are reluctant to come. I never have possessed any magical power. These people came because of their faith, and their faith in God heals them. Do you know God? During the pandemic, it, it, it showed us the division between those that really know God and those that are just accompanying people to church. Because when the wind blew, the, sh the shaft, that separated from the weight. And it boils down to lack of knowledge. If you know God, you won't hold back on coming to church because you have issue with the pastor. Is the pastor the one you're serving? Is the pastor the one that will save you? You have a personal link, connection, relationship with God? Or you are expecting man affirmation. That will take you to heaven. I'm running my race to make it. And I'm urging others to follow suit. And I'm saying, don't even do what I say alone. Some people will say, just do what I say. What did the world say? Pastor, what are you doing? Knowledge of the original. 
I want to start with the last, uh, with, with this uh, uh, passage, and that I will bring back afterwards. Second Peter 1, 3-8. 2 Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, from verses 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and excellence. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through this, he has given us his precious and magnificent promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature now that you have escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desire. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities and continue to grow in them, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in the knowledge of our Lord. You see the emphasis on the knowledge, on the knowledge. That everything you ever need is being given to you by divine power through the knowledge. Now, what I'm saying is that without your understanding of Christ, can you be productive? No. What did he say? To be success and, 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 and to, 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 what did he say to Joshua? Then that you'll be something and have great success. You prosper and have great success. This world shall not depart. This world that brings the enlightenment of who Jesus is, that brings you the knowledge of what God's plan for you is, when you have it, then you will have great success and you will prosper. Everything you ever need is through the world. It's in the world. It's by the world. The world points to Jesus. The knowledge of, the, of Jesus Christ is the word of God. If, we, if, if, if I preach from now and don't get down from this altar for one year, it's not likely to change one person. Because part of men are made up. And that is why the rich man went to heaven. When he died, he went to hell. I was begging Abraham, can you let Lazarus go down? I said, no, no, no. So that he could tell me. I said, no, they have all the preachers and prophets there. I see preaching it. Just, just that they're not hearing it. Ignorance will kill. Knowledge is power. So, so this is the article that I preached that was posted on the 11th of March, my birthday, 2015. Some years ago, I stopped by a Wawa convenience store in Philadelphia for a drink. And as I passed through the, the, aisle, the, the aisle of soda, Coke, and all that, I could not help but notice an elderly man looking at the rows of the refrigerator, set of refrigerator with all drinks. And he was looking, looking at those two. And in his confusion, he said, why is it so difficult to choose drinks these days? Things were not like this when I was growing up. You know, they, will, they, will line, they can line it from here all the way to the, the, the monitor there. All different kinds of codes. 
so, uh, 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 something. That got me thinking about the difficulty of making a choice when faced with too many options. And then the possibility of instability in our decisions to choose. Because you're faced with so many. A man craving for Jack Cola may be faced with the choices of Coca-Cola, Pepsi Cola, Ruth Beer, Dr. Pepper, RC Cola, Cherry Pepsi, Vanilla Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, and a whole lot more of that. So, and then you say, this is, you get overwhelmed because there are so many. In his confusion, he may end up just picking anything, throwing up his ear in expiration and settling for whatever. That, let me just. That's all. He just lost knowledge of what he really wanted. And it reminds me of this that says a double minded person is unstable in his way. When you got there, you saw. That's James 1.8. The problem we face now with choice is not between the clear extremes. It's not between the clear extremes. It's not between the clear distinct extremes. It is not between the north and the south. It's not between the east or the west. It's not between the hot and the cold. It's the gray areas between the distinct extremes. What am I saying? For we all know good is good. We know bad is bad. But what do we do with the not too good and not all that bad option? What about the things that aren't necessarily bad but have long, long since been deemed unworthy of being called good? They're not really all bad. But they have nothing in them that is good enough for you to say it's good. It is the gray area that makes choice so difficult. Is that where you walk between the not too bad and not very good area? That is where the difficulty is. Not between the devil and God. But what about the God that is the, the, the God they present to you wrapped up in the devil? Yeah, everybody does it. That's, does that make it good? Well, I don't care about the moral area. I care about the legal area. But what about the moral area that you know, everybody will look at you and say, that's why everybody does it. You can even wear it with your, your bare chest and wear it with your, and be wearing naked. It's, it's sexy. It makes people look all right. This thing leaves us threading through gray areas and leaves us unable to pick the pure truth. We get so it becomes blurry at a point. If you look at the way they mix color, this might be sharp red, or this is might be white, white, snow white. This is charcoal black. And when you start to come down, and the shade, the shade, the shade, hey, 50 shade of gray. I'm just, I'm just, hey, I'm just looking at you. See, it's just to flip, flip, and by the time you get to the middle. You're not sure whether it's white or black, no more. But it's snow white and charcoal black here. By the time you get to the middle, it's like, oh, glory. And that's how it's big. That's why it's big, because you make a choice. This is leave us threading the very gray areas and makes us unable to pick the pure truth. Revelation 3.16 talks about you are neither cold nor warm. And why are we deep? Finding it tough to stand because it's been so mixed up, mixed up, polluted, matched into each other. It's inseparable. This takes me to the issue of the knowledge of the original. The knowledge of the original will help you 
in your decision and your choice. Now, and I'm not sure how many of you know. Uh, no, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not if you know of the, the, the dilemma where you have to choose between two strikingly similar, balanced in value, equally desirable items or objects or situations. And the only way for you out of it is to know the standard of what the original is supposed to be. Because they look so good. Yeah. We had this discussion yesterday on dating, and it was about the, the title was uh, Before You Say Yes, Before You Propose. Take a step back and see what are those things that need to be in place. You have these two beautiful women. Very beautiful. If you want to put a figure, you will call it A. My wife was like eight then. And then they have the height, they have the confession, they have the and they have to, and, and then you get to a point you don't know what to do. You call your best friend, you say, Can you pick for me? Aren't you supposed to know what you want? And they say, Oh, that that lady, and she you may end up to say, oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three. three. This one is so fine. The father is so rich. This one is a PhD doctor. Oh, maybe not. So which one do you want? What do you know her inside out? Because there will be a need for comparison if you know what you want. And that's the trouble. They look alike. They, they almost balance up in value, in presentation, in this. But do you, who, who is this person inside? And you look at the abs of the man, you see, this is the six pack. It's, I don't even, I can hear them. I don't even know which one now. Oh. You have lost the knowledge of the real thing. You have. This brings me to, to this brings to mind. A Pepsi commercial a few years back that used to be very popular. You got the right one, baby. Are you not following me? When they say you got the right one, baby, uh huh. Is that not what they say? Uh, you forgot so quick? You forgot the charge? Or you're all pretending now? The, light, the house of the Lord is replaced with it. Let the truth be told. There's no shame in your game. It, see, you got the right one, baby. It became a popular slogan among the lover of Pepsi. You see? And I was moved to go listen to the commercial in its entirety to really understand how to present this in this passage, in this, in this message. This is what it says. Some of the lyrics were, you know when it's right. You know when you feel it. You hold it. You hear it, you taste it, it's right. If it's irresistibly, irresistibly sippable, incontestably tasteful, and imminently wonderful, you got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. Why can't you help me finish it? That is the, the song, the, the lyrics of the song that, they, you know, Ray Charles was just doing this, and, 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 and there was, and this is what they say. You know it when it's right. You know it when you feel it. You hold it. You hear it. You taste it. It's right. If it's irresistibly sippable, incontestably tasteful, imminently wonderful, you got the right one, baby. Ah. That is how you presented it. And that Pepsi slogan became the talk of town. Every little child, every grown-up, that's a Pepsi. You got the, that's how, that's how. Now, 
what this is saying is that even with one that cannot see, now he fold that again, and he just takes it. He, he, he says, he can take, take, hold it. He can taste it. He can feel it. He can smell it. He knows it. If it's, the, there are qualities that he expects from me. If it's irresistible, sipable. He, this, this, this. I got it. So if you wake him up at night, tell he knows Pepsi from Coke and diet or RC Cola. Because he has studied it. That's what they're presenting in a way. What about you? Do you know the original? How much do you know of it? Do you lose all senses when an elegant one comes and, hey, wait a minute, let me tell you this. I'm not saying this about the choice of your husband or your wife or your, your whatever. But let's look at the wisest man on planet Earth that was and no one has been at that level of wisdom. You know who I'm talking about. He got to a point. This man Solomon talks with God. When he was blessing the temple, the priest ran out because the glory descended in a heavy way. He led them. He knew God. The wisest man that asked for wisdom and discernment so he can judge this great multitude of God's people. He knows how to work with God. He follow after the footstep of his father David. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Amorites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. But surely they would turn away your heart after their God. Solomon craved unto this one. Uh, 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 first, first King uh, 11, 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart after other girls and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. The loss focus of the origin. And it went down. The wisest man ever on earth. That is why we are saying this. I mean, bring a little bit of a light mood and make you all happy, but I am telling you seriously that when you lose sight, a lot of people, they are thinking faculty is overturned now. God is not who they know. God is not who they serve. They come to show off on Sundays. No wonder there's no consistency in their work with God. They all together have become foolish and far of the way. To such are only pray. Never allow the physical to blindfold you. It's not all that deals are in store. And you'll be dissuaded. You will walk away from the plan and purpose. And do you see here? Do you even know the voice of God? Let me tell you how to sense the voice of God. You know what is good, you know what is wrong. Try to do what is try to do one thing you know is right, it's, it's wrong. And if your conscience, if you hear, if you have turbulence in your spirit, stop, inquire. But so, so when you are about to do something that your mind is not clear is right, don't doubt it. Just don't do it. And you will see how. See your internal reaction. See the release of peace. Or just hold him back for a minute. 
See the way you will feel accomplished inside of you. See how you will feel some peace. Because the presence of the Lord will bring peace. But when you walk the way and you are not sure, let me even tell you, even in the business venture, you're about to join business with hand in business with somebody, and you're feeling a little bit, stop for a moment. Take it to him. Because you are not giving him honor to bring it to him. He said, lean not to the Lord, with, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge him. And when you start to feel a little bit, what, take a minute, and say, God, what are you saying? He will tell you. Because you are giving him honor to want to hear his or his opinion about what you're about to do. So sin, is it joining business with somebody is sin? No, no, you get bumped or you get rewarded. That's all. But when you when you connect, you take it to God. And he's saying don't. That must be a reward. If you yield. If you yield. If you, yield. If you don't yield, you don't make it to go to hell. hell. You just burn money. You waste money and you land on your own end. And it's, it's, now I'm telling you, it's not a sinful thing. Whether you have, you have seen you go to hell, it's just getting into business. And if God is leading you not to join the business with that person or whoever, and you take it to Him and you yield it to what God will connect you to something. Else. But if you refuse to hear and you do, you won't, you won't go to hell. You just lose money. You may lose your house, and then you become wise. That's what they call experience. It's experience. But let your experience be such that. That wants to know him more, that wants to worship him more, that desire to dig into him more. And when you know what he's saying, he's talking to you even as you are working. Look at the 911 just a, the, the 20 years yesterday. You know how many stories of people that said that something said to me, don't go. I was about to go, and something delayed me. I couldn't until then. I saw the, the airplane, the, the plane rock running into the building. A lot of testimony came after that time, if you will remember. I wanted to, to go, but they said, say, say, "Take this day off. Just don't go. I said, ah, they will fire me. Just stay. Trust in the Lord with all thy might, and lean not to your own understanding." In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Direction is all we need. No, man's, no, no man knows how to walk. You have not walked this, this path before. If you yield to him, he will take you through. When you are so messed up, vexed up, angry, about to cross everything, can you hear his voice? Do you recognize his voice? If not, who are you serving? What you are saying is that you don't need to dance to any kind of religion. You don't need to imbibe but everything that is new, you want to try it. Some people will not even bother to go and try the nudist religion and be nude. Everyone is free. It's a new thing now. Oh. Do you go down every option that feels like, that looks like, but is completely void of truth? Where is he? He said, that, he said, he said consider this thing. Is there truth in it? Is there virtue in it? Is there anything praiseworthy in it? Just take four or three or four of those things and check. Is it this place I'm going? I don't like to go to all those Japanese. I don't do it. There's nothing wrong if you are a party person. They call themselves animals. They say they are party animals. I'm not an animal, I'm a man. Because you know people. You know that when you're about to go to war, you study your opponent so in and out to know him, to know his moves, to know his character, to know the way he moves at war, and to know how, how you, can, you can counter his moves. You study him to be able to fight him. Won't you study God to be able to walk with him well? Learn about him. Understand. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. We meditate on so many things day and night. You have an investment somewhere, you don't go to sleep. 
last thing you check for falling Bitcoin level. And you lose sleep when it drops from 60 to 30. But you don't, need to, you don't need to study that if you know this. It will tell you whether to even, don't, don't look at that. Mistakenly, you will just run into it, you do it and touch it, but the next day it's 60, you say, take it off. You can hear that. But then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have great success. This is still not without challenges. So in addition to that, you need to be con you need, you need continuous guidance. Reading the word and studying the word and trying, that is still not without challenging moment. It doesn't want you to be that to be your God. You want to know it to know how to work, but you want to lean on God even after you've loaded this in you. Trust in the Lord with all thy might and lean on to your understanding. You studied the word. And some have not even studied the word. They don't even know the word. They just say, Jesus, I help you. And they will quote one reference wrong. And they will say, they will bring the, 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 the first verse of John, the, John 3 16. I'm ending with Revelation 2. I'm combining it together. The enemy knows what you are about to say. He knows you're wrong. But when you have the word in you, don't, don't trust in your ability. Trust in him to take it. Because the word now might not. You want to open the Bible when, 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 when you're about to get into an accident? Or you just lean on God and say, God, I commit myself to you. Lead me. You become the spiritual GPS that takes you around all and, and my own, I should meander all around the place. But without the word, you don't have anything to bring back. But with the word, you still need to rely on him. Because the word teaches us that you are applying what you've read. Trust not in your power. Lean into the power of God. With the word established in your heart and complete trust towards him, you will never lack counsel and you will never lack direction, even in the face of thousands of alternatives. You will know the distinct path to work and because you know the original so well, you will be able to feel it, taste it, smell it, and touch it. And that reminds me of the same as in John, 1 John 1, that which we have seen with our eyes and we were touched with our hands. Hey, hey. People, you can see it. You see the mannerism. You see the way they work. It does not matter whether they come in a beautiful girl. It doesn't matter whether they come in a handsome man. You can sense it because you know the original. It will stand out because you know, you smell, you know, you've touched the one that is the real one. Since you have been called before your formation, then it has been decreed that you will manifest your purpose. So call us for testimonies. And this is it as I'm closing. I close with the verse I started with. You can never be unproductive. And you can never be ineffective. This is what he said in 2 Peter 1 3. His divine power has given me everything I need for life and godliness. His divine power has given me. Now, it is a, it's a through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. Through the knowledge of Him who called us. Through the knowledge. How do you have the knowledge? Knowledge is power, it is here. Dig it in, soak it in. It will tell you. The pastor that is misleading you, you will know. True. A lot of people have their church outside of church. It's a group of gossip. They come in, they dissect, and they take a decision. And they follow their own little plan. Not God's plan. You will never be ineffective. Everything you need for life and godliness, through the knowledge, is here. And then he has to say some things. A couple of things he said to do. He said, so for this very reason, for this very reason, that is verse 5, make every effort to add to your faith virtue. Do a dictionary and look, break it down. 
Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And to knowledge self-control. Self-control. I feel like punching, but I thank you, God. Self-control. When you're dating a man and he's so upset, you throw a punch in the wall and you say, hey, he's just upset. It's your head. Let's move. It lacks self-control. Self-control. To self-control uh, uh, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. If you possess these qualities and this quality continue to grow, never be ineffective. You will never be unproductive. And you will never stumble. You will never be deceived. It does not matter who brings the deception. You will understand them. You will know them from a distance. How come the prophet that couldn't see due to old age and the lady came disguising to come to the one that couldn't see well and before she came in, the Lord has already told him a day before because he knows the original. Natural man will be deceived. Because your, your eyes have grown dim from, as a result of age. But the, and another one is disguising. Even right now with you that can see 2020, somebody come around in the, in the, in, in the little dust atmosphere with masks and a face cap, you won't even know. Talk less of man that is already dim in age, eyes because of age, and this lady disguised. A lot of people come to receive food online and they will disguise themselves. Because, and I won't know them. But well, some people will recognize them as this, this lady that came last week that caused trouble. Now she's this guy, she put all that like, like a woman from Afghanistan. But the Lord already told him before they came. It's original. If you take it as it is, it will work for you like you never have. Don't forsake the knowledge. Don't forsake to dig into it. And as you do, the Lord will uphold you. You will never be unproductive. You will never be ineffective in the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God in you will take you through. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.